Sometimes you have to move backwards to move forwards. This is what happened with me the last few weeks on Unreal Engine. Previously, I had added an animation to my crouch. That wasn't too hard as I mainly used a tutorial to set that up. But now I wanted to set up an animation for when my character jumps and lands. I thought this would be as simple as hooking up my crouch animation to my jump code, but I quickly found that if I crouched and jumped, the animations would overlap each other. I tried looking up tutorials for this, but most of the videos online seemed to be set up for third person characters when mine was first person. I really didn't know where to look, so I turned to a channel that I haven't been to since my first week, Aramental Studios. This channel helped me out so much in the beginning, allowing me to set up a first person character and all the fundamentals that came with it. They didn't have a tutorial on jump animations, however, their latest video was showing off a new first person template that they decided to release for free. And y'all know Mr. Krabs is my spirit animal. Hello, I like money. In this template, it comes with all the code from his previous tutorials, as well as a jump animation. And since the jump animation was what I was really needing, your boy grabbed that template real quick. Inside the template, I finally got to see how they set up the jumping animations, which was using a camera animation sequence. This allows for blending between animations. This was super helpful and honestly easy to modify. Saved me tons of headache and time searching for solutions now you might call me lazy okay i'll be that but i didn't quite know how to recreate this in my project so i figured it would be easier to just copy my code and paste it into this template things like my physics system took quite a bit of work to get properly moved over but after a day or so i finally got all my code and settings moved over this was also a good decision because i can use my old project as a testing ground for certain features and move it over when those features are polished I imagine this will be another layer of protection from bloat in my game. I seriously can't thank Aramental Studios enough, so definitely go subscribe to their channel and show them some love. Now besides those jump animations driving me crazy, another thing I was struggling with was destructible glass. Originally, I didn't plan on making anything in my game destructible, as it seemed like a lot of extra work and could open up a lot of difficulties with map designing. However, while I was designing my level, I realized that destructible glass was different. It wouldn't be very immersive if you couldn't break windows in my game. Most of my game will be exploring different environments and figuring out how to escape them. Like a player might enter a room, all the doors are locked, but there is a window on the second floor that the player will first have to stack up objects to climb to, then they'll have to break the window to continue progressing. So I set out to make destructible glass. I first started with learning Unreal Engine's chaos system so I could break the object, and I was honestly kind of disappointed. Most of the tutorials online seem to show you the most basic explanation, then move on. They show you how to set up a group fracture, maybe adjust the damage threshold and that's it. I did what the tutorials would show and would be left with tons of issues. Like for my glass, I could break it, yeah, but it would all break together and the window would just fall out as one piece after that. I was able to fix this a little by anchoring one of the fractures, but that still left me with annoying collision. I couldn't walk through the window if there were still fractures in it blocking my way, and all of the broken glass shards on the ground couldn't be walked on or it would just straight up send my character flying. However, after a few days of searching, I did come across Ryan Laley's video series on making a destructible jug. The second video in this series showed how to set up custom collision profiles and how to apply that collision to the different levels of the fractures. This was super helpful and later videos in the series fleshed out the system even further. It's still not perfect as I'll need to set up a damage field connected to my player that will be able to break secondary levels of the fracture, but I still wanted to show off the progress. The next part of making destructible glass is the actual glass material. There's tons of tutorials on this, but much like the fracture tutorials, a lot of these tutorials were basic and didn't really give convincing results at the end. A lot of the tutorials you'll find will show how to make materials transparent, give the glass a color, 
and a bit of shine, but this wasn't really looking realistic in my project, so I had to do another few days of tutorial surfing to finally come across Pitchfork Academy's tutorial here. The biggest thing that separates this tutorial from a lot of others was it shows how to apply a normal map to your glass, which allows it to have more realistic light interaction. It also shows how to apply another material on top of the texture, acting as a layer of dust. These two features really take the glass to the next level and it looked great. However, I did find a few issues with this too. For a lot of tutorials on glass, they either recommend using the default lit shading model or a thin translucent shading model, but both of these seem to have their own pros and cons. The default lit shading model seems to struggle with dark areas. It would look good in bright areas, but if the shards fell into shadows, they appeared bright as though they weren't in the shade. Pitchfork Studios recommended using using the thin translucent shading model, which did fix this issue, however, it seemed too opaque for my liking. It looked great in their video, but for some reason, in my project, I could barely see through the glass. I'm sure it's just some step that I missed, but no matter how many times I rewound the video, I couldn't diagnose my problem. I tried for hours to make it look more translucent, but I couldn't find anything that worked. I ended up changing the shading model from thin translucent to the eye shading model. This is primarily used for shading on eyeballs, however, this actually fixed all my issues. It had great reflections, great translucency, and also looked great in the light and dark. I'm sure tons of you are going to tell me that this wasn't a good solution, and I'd probably agree with you. And if you have any better ways of making glass, definitely let me know your suggestions down below. Either way, here was the end result. I know it's not perfect, but coming from dreams, this was the best looking glass I had ever made. And now I can't wait to start throwing this in my game. I mean glass is such a crucial part to games and who doesn't love breaking glass in games and in real life. All that's left for my windows is setting up a more robust sound system. Currently it just has a sound that plays after each break resetting every half second. It's very simple and I'm gonna set up sound cues for multiple sounds to be used but for now while it's still in its prototyping phase this was the system I decided to go with. And as I said before, if you have any comments, questions, or critiques, definitely leave them down below. I love this community and hearing from you guys is always so nice. On this channel, I've seen almost nothing but support and people who are excited about game dev. And in a world filled with such toxic communities centered around negativity, this community often reminds me of the good out there. I love to go live on Twitch and build with you guys, so if you're interested in seeing the project early and want to offer suggestions that could end up in the final game, definitely stop by and say what's up. But if not, I'll just see you in the next Unreal Struggle Sesh. Oh, that's very good. But I'm a bit confused and perhaps you can help me. What I don't understand is that you've been working since, I think, what, about six this morning. Yet, such a small pile of hinges. <laughs>